Alright guys, first video for 2020 and we're starting off strong with my $80 DIY director's monitor that I made. And honestly, this has absolutely leveled up my productivity on set so much. So today, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this. How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So firstly, director's monitors were something that I've always kind of like wanted to get into to actually level up my productions, but they're like insanely expensive and they're not really something that like low budget filmmakers can afford to invest in for their work. And that is exactly why I decided to make my own to fix this problem. Now I should have figured this out sooner and I'm not sure why I didn't, but companies now make 12 volt TVs and monitors for like caravans and cars and stuff, which is perfect for the batteries that we actually use as filmmakers, which are like 14.8 volt VLOX. And to convert from 14.8 to 12 volts is actually really simple and you can do it without actually any knowledge really of how to do so, which makes it, I guess it makes this build basically like a plug and play once you have the right accessories to get it all started. All right, so firstly, to make this director's monitor, we do need a few things. So that is a 12 volt monitor, a wireless transmitter, a power distribution board, a battery, a V-lock mount, a cheese plate, and a spigot adapter, as well as a DC to DC cable, a HDMI, and a USB-C cable. For me, I use USB-C, but that is just for whatever your wireless transmitter needs to actually be powered from the V-lock battery. So the monitor that I actually found, this one, this Axis one, I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace and it only cost me 80 Australian dollars. And it's just like 21 inch Axis 12 volt monitor. It's very basic. And I guess depending on how good of like an image you're actually wanting and how good you want the colors and everything to be is this is where you're gonna spend your money to make sure that you get the end result that you want. Now for me, I wasn't too fussed about like how good the colors were, how good the image quality was. As long as I could see everything on a larger scale, uh, that's basically why I wanted it. Because I wanted to just kind of like see anything that I'd missed looking at, you know, like my little C70 screen or like a little five inch on camera monitor. For the wireless transmitter, I'm using the Hollyland Mars 300 Pro. And this is honestly my favorite wireless transmitter at the moment because it has built-in antennas and you still get decent range considering. And this makes it extremely compact and it works really well with this setup because like you don't have to worry about antennas kind of getting snagged on stuff and potentially snapping off. Plus it actually is one of Hollyland's uh, cheapest wireless transmitters as well. So it's a good like entry into the world of wireless transmission. Then for the accessories, I've got a uh, DTAP splitter from a company called Fumito, but you can get them, I guess like lots of companies do these. I just got mine off Amazon. I know you can get them off eBay as well. And the reason I went with this is because it has a, a 12 volt DC out as well as a USB out as well. And also has a five volt DC out as well, which is super cool. And it means that you can just like plug and play and you don't have to worry about like wiring stuff up and trying to figure out what all that kind of stuff is. But on the other hand, if you are actually happy to do some wiring and figuring out all that stuff, you can get a DC uh, step down converter and you can wire it up yourself and it might be a little bit cheaper. So now for the actual assembly, I just used some spare bolts that I had lying around the studio that happened to fit in the hole on the back of the monitor to mount the cheese plate. But you could just as easily like hot glue this to the back if you want to make it like a bit more of a permanent setup. Then I added that uh, adapter spigot and I've mounted mine a little bit lower because I needed to like leave room and space up the top for the rest of the parts that I wanted to mount onto this monitor. Now you can just go ahead and mount your wireless transmitter with one of these little tension arms uh, coming off the cheese plate. And I did do that, but I actually ended up just 3D printing a little MPF like dummy mount. And I've just hot glued that to the back of the monitor, which makes it really easy to just kind of like quickly mount it on there. And I freeze up one of my little tension arms as well. And I'll leave a link down in the description below as well if you do want to see uh, the 3D, I guess like model that I use to print off and glue to the back of this for my wireless transmitter. Now next we can actually just mount that D-tap splitter with one of those little tension arms. And where all these bits go really depends on the setup and the kind of stuff that you're using. Uh, basically I just got, I've been adjusting it over the last like two or three months and trying to figure out where the perfect position is based on the stuff that I've been using. 
Now another reason why I bought this specific splitter is because it has quarter inch holes on the back which makes it makes mounting it to anything really super duper easy. Now for the DC cable, because it is using a 12 volt supply, uh, you have to make sure to get a DC to DC cable that is a 2.5 millimeter cable. I bought a whole bunch of 2.1s and they are only rated for five volts. So it won't actually fit into the DC port on your 12 volt monitor and on that splitter, it'll fit into the five volt side, but not on the 12 volt side. So when you order these, make sure you get 2.5 millimeter for that 12 volt cable. And then we can plug that into the 12 volt side on the splitter, and then that then goes into the back of the monitor as well. And then for my wireless transmitter, I've just used a USB-C cable because that's how you can power the Mars 300 Pro, but I know a lot of them use a DC cable as well, so you might need another you know, like, like if they run off five volts and you can run a 2.5 millimeter uh, DC to DC from that splitter into the cable, or you can get like a D-tap to DC as well, depending on kind of like what cables you have or depending on how much power you need to supply to the actual wireless transmitter you end up using. And then finally, I've just attached this little V-lock mount as well as a battery. Now I was originally using my uh, Kame TV Mini 99 V-lock batteries because I just love them, I've got six of them, but I realized that obviously like I'd love to use them for my cameras and my lights and stuff. And I've got eight of these little MPF 970s and they're just doing kind of like nothing now. So what I've done is I've got a uh, two, it's like a dual MPF to V-Lock kind of like adapter. And I now use these for my monitor so I can free up a V-Lock for my camera and lights and all that kind of stuff as well. And again, if you don't want to go down the V-Lock route, you want a bit of a cheaper option, then I'll leave a link down below to this little uh, MPF adapter V-Lock plate thing. There's a few different brands that do it and they kind of pop up and down every so often. So keep an eye and just maybe just and search around and see if you can find one that works for you. And then finally to actually mount it on things, this is the light stand that I use from Niwa. And the reason I use it is because the top spigot actually comes out so you can mount it sideways, which is perfect for this setup right here. Now I've been using this on basically every production since I built it and it's come in so handy, more so just to kind of like see what's in the frame on a larger scale. The main thing that I found before actually like making this director's monitor is that a lot of the time I would get into the editing suite and I'd see stuff in the frame like just small things that I could have fixed while we were shooting to stop me having to like fix it in post uh, and it mainly just you just you just couldn't see it because the screen you're looking at is so small if you're just using like the on-camera monitor, even like a five inch monitor on your camera, they're just too small to see those small details. Plus Jason has also been able to use it as a first AC monitor when he's like pulling focus for me, which has made it so much easier because again, a larger scale, even though it's not necessarily like as sharp as one of your small monitors, you can just see the peaking much better on something like this. Now there are some downsides to something like this compared to buying an actual director's monitor, with the first being obviously features. So because this is a TV, it doesn't have things like false color and LUTs and peaking built into it. It's literally just, the TV. And one of the annoying things when shooting with the C70 is that when you're reviewing shots afterwards, for some reason, I do not know why, uh, it takes off the Rec 709 conversion light over HDMI, so you're seeing like a C-Log2 image on this monitor. So obviously having a director's monitor, you could just use the LUT or turn the LUT on on the actual monitor itself and that would fix this issue. But it's just something you kind of have to work with if you are doing something like this. And the other problems are the brightness and the viewing angle. So obviously this is just an $80 super cheap monitor. It's not gonna be color accurate and it's also not gonna be super bright and it's not gonna have the best viewing angle, but it is perfect if you just need something like a bigger screen to see what's going on. It also looks really impressive for like clients as well, being able to see it on a bigger scale. And just like, if you remember the limitations of something like this, you can get around it and you can make it work for you. Plus now I can actually see how much I use this on set. It makes me actually want to invest in a proper director's monitor because I can see the benefits of like going from this to an actual director's monitor. But before actually making this and seeing how much I was going to use it, I was very hesitant to invest, you know, two, three thousand dollars in a proper director's monitor. But anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this one, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you want to find out more about any of the stuff mentioned in this video, I'll leave some links down below in the description. Otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.